In addressing a Harvard graduation, Woody Allen once said, You have entered a crossroads of life. Down one road is despondency and despair. Down the other road is total annihilation. I sure hope you make the right choice. A rather dramatic contrast, to say the least. But it's true that most of us have felt like that at times. We experience circumstances in which we see no way out. We get stuck between the rock and the hard place, feeling huge burdens and sometimes waves of despair. In a nutshell, that's the story of the Torah reading when the Jewish people find themselves at the shore of the Red Sea, with the Egyptian army rapidly closing in on them from behind, and an ocean in front of them. Only days before, they were celebrating their freedom, but now emotions are reversed, and they find themselves in dire straits. How does God deliver them? And how do we find deliverance when we feel like we're facing the same threat? To understand the message of the story, it's important to look at how the Jews, our ancestors, got trapped there. Remember, this wasn't a military blunder. It wasn't some mistake on a map. It was, incredibly enough, by God's design. God could have led the Jews on a more direct route to the Promised Land by the Mediterranean coast. The direct route from Egypt to Israel is about 350 miles, about the same distance from, let's say, Toronto to Montreal. And even a large group of a few million people could walk that in six to eight weeks. But God cautioned, if they went the short route, they would encounter the Philistines. And the Philistines were a warring people. And the children of Israel were not ready for battle. But perhaps the more important reason God took them on this indirect route was so he could lure Pharaoh to chase after them and set up a final encounter that was designed to test and strengthen their faith and demonstrate forever the special bond between God and his people. Our ancestors needed to understand that God had not delivered them from slavery just to abandon them in the desert. They had to see that God was still there, still protecting them, and that God always would be. The plan, therefore, was simple. Place the Jews in such a predicament that it would be impossible for them to escape without God's intervention. God's plan was to deliver his people in such a way that it would be plain to every one of them that God was the true God, but of course, the Jews didn't know that plan, and so standing there at the foot of the sea, they panicked. They responded probably like many of us would, who have felt similarly trapped. They tried to find a scapegoat, someone to blame for their problems. And so they distorted and glamorized their past. They said to Moses, were there no graves in Egypt that you could take us to to die? What have you done to us? A few days later, when faced with a crisis of a lack of food, they said, In the land of Egypt we sat by pots of meat where we ate bread until we were full. It's remarkable. They weren't a week out of Egypt, and it seems they had developed amnesia. Did they really want to stay and serve the Egyptians? Did the Egyptians ever give them meat and bread to eat until they were full? They had cried out to God to save them, and now that they were free, as soon as the pressure of difficult circumstances came upon them, they distorted and glamorized their past. They basically said, we didn't have it so bad in Egypt. We didn't really want to leave there. 
in the first place. But people who are trapped or people who are wronged, they tend to distort the past. Someone who was involved in an extramarital affair might say, you know, I was married for 20 years and I was never happy. Really? You were never happy? Or sometimes I get so fed up with my kids with their fighting, I say, I don't know why you kids can't get along. My sister and I, we never fought. Well, that's not exactly true. FDR once said, Nothing is so responsible for the good old days as a bad memory. I love that quote. Nothing is so responsible for the good old days as a bad memory. Blaming someone else may make us feel better, but it never really helps. So what should we do when we feel trapped? Well, this comes down to the Jewish value of bitachon. Faced in difficult circumstances, we need trust, bitachon. Bitachon is the knowledge that God has a plan for all of our lives and that that plan includes being tested from time to time, both as individuals and as a larger society. And it is especially when we feel trapped that we need bitachon. Without it, we can resort to desperate behavior. Instead, we're called to learn from the lesson of our ancestors at the shore, particularly the lesson of a man named Nachshon, who taught us to move ahead as best as we can. Who was Nachshon? On the banks of the sea, when the people complained to Moses for bringing them into the desert to die, God said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Speak unto the children of Israel and tell them to go forward. But the people were immobilized by their fear. The Talmud tells us that one man, Nachshon, went forward as commanded by God until the water was up to his neck, and only then did it begin to recede and the people followed. The lesson is clear. When it seems like we're up against a brick wall, seemingly caught between a rock and a hard place, caught between despair and total annihilation, Understand that God is trying to show us something. The world might be trying to show us something. Don't panic. We're called to be open, to receive the message of our circumstances, and always try to move forward as best as we can, even if the waters come up to our chin. To you and your families, I wish Shabbat Shalom.